I love LED strips. They make the world glowy. Today I want to walk you through the two main types of LED strips that I use. And those are non-addressable LED strips, where the entire strip is one color at a time, and NeoPixels, which are individually addressable, which means you can control each one separately. I want to make a brief mention of other options you have. For example, you could go with rope lights, which are sort of like flexi clear tube with lights all the way down. You could also use EL wire, EL tape, or EL panel, which are all cool options but they require working with some weird voltages, so I tend to not go with those. If you're curious though, I'd check out the Woe board. So your chief considerations with LED strips are going to be density, voltage, the coating, and the controls. First up, make sure that you have lights that are dense enough for what you want. These ones have three LEDs every two inches, aka five centimeters, and the one on the left has half as many. You'll also find that cheaper versions have lots of these seams where smaller strips have been joined together underneath the coating. These are what I call NALs. They're non-addressable LEDs. It's a sort of meta acronym. <laughs> when you control these, the entire strip is the same color at once. They run off of 12 volts, although they will also take 9 volts. You can get them with or without this waterproof silicone epoxy coating. They usually come with a sticky 3M self-adhesive backing that isn't super strong, but can be reinforced. They often come with an infrared control system, but you can also control them directly by soldering to them or with an Arduino using transistors. One thing to watch out for with these is that they may have the pins in a different order. For example, I've got one strip that goes 12 volts, blue, red, green, and the other one goes 12 volts, green, red, blue. So make sure that your strips match up, especially if you're chaining them together. You can find lots of varieties of these by searching on Amazon for a 5050 RGB LED strip. The 5050 refers to the size of the LED, which is 5 by 5 millimeters. Uh, which also happens to apply to these NeoPixels, but uh, they're less frequently described as that and more often as WS2812s. Speaking of which, I've got a Hackster tutorial for getting started with NeoPixels as well as one for the other type called Glow Hacker. You can find these on Amazon by looking for WS2812, WS2812B, or NeoPixel, which is an Adafruit specific branding of them that's super cool and very reliable. They run on 5 volts instead, and of course, you can control them individually with a little program. And that's pretty easy to write. And you can get them in rings and small sticks and matrices and all kinds of cool stuff. White ones and black ones. And these are all on a flexi PCB that has no coating on the back. You can also get them with other weird form factors, which are super great for distributing them around a costume or like a cloud or whatever. These kind of smell. <laughs> also, the waterproof version just comes in this silicone tube sleeve thing. So it's a little harder to attach to stuff, but zip ties will do just fine. Or electrical tape. NeoPixels do not come with a remote control, but of course you can make your own with Arduino. The thing about these is that you have to have a controller in order to run them. That's because they have only three pins, and that's for five volts, data, and ground. With these, again, you want to make sure that you have the pins going in the same order. For example, here I have data, five volts, and ground, and ground, data, and five volts. So on one, data is in the middle, on the other, five volts is in the middle, and they're just totally different. You also have to pay attention to which end of the strip you're controlling. It has an arrow on there for a reason. I've had some friends use a kind of little clamp that is supposed to attach LED strips together without you having to solder them, but they told me that those came apart pretty soon and weren't very durable, so. All right, so that's the short version. Stay tuned for in-depth looks at both of these types of LEDs. And you can always check out the main Blink and Lights tutorial, which is the central repository of all of this information, including links to all of my other LED tutorials. Shine on.